Okay guys, so I'm starting in the shop today. Let the camera adjust. Hello! Uh, I'm back and today I have a rather unusual RC adventure to do. Uh, I actually have to work on my RC skid steer, my full size loader, uh, because I've had some problems with the electronics inside after I had a battery drain down. Not sure what happened. Uh, we're gonna investigate what's happening uh, and you know, I'm gonna send back the electronics I have back to the manufacturer. Now the bonus is, is they have a great support system. I already called them and got them to send me a brand new radio uh, as well as a new brain for the actual uh, robotics that get installed into my loader, right? It's a big D series loader uh, from CAT. So this is one of the features I've had that helps me out with my bad back issues because I've got bad discs in my back. Uh, but regardless, I've had a communication issue where the radio itself has stopped talking to uh, the machine uh, and it's lost its bind, right? It's link. So after troubleshooting everything I did, we figured there's something wrong with the radio or something wrong with the main module. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out. First, remove the two bolts located on the front of the cab. Next, lift the cab until it latches on the safety bar. Now you are able to easily access the hydraulic pumps hoses and valves. Uh, now to get in and to remove this bolt here, well, I guess it's just a nut and bolt really on both sides, right? Then I should be able to hinge it up. Here is the red safety uh, lever. Never done this before, but pretty cool. One in the washer and in the bolt. Guess I can leave it right there anyway. There's two types of people. People that say I, I can't, and the people that say I'm gonna figure out how to do it. Yes, I have a bad back, but I still live my life. Ugh. All right, first time I've seen underneath. Hmm, pretty cool. Now when I look at it all lifted up like that, man, would that make a cool battle bot. I wish I knew more people that had skid steers that were radio controlled. <laughs> Here we go, I've actually, guys, I don't know if you're into a uh, construction RC uh, or if you have, but really how a skid steer actually works is exactly how it says, it skids to turn or to steer, skid steer. It locks up one side as it turns and powers this side, or it locks up this side and kind of turns over here. This is just like a small radio controlled skid steer, for example. This has a motor that actually has a chain that it works on a sprocket system that actually turns on either side. It's simply a brain telling the motors which one to operate is the which one to turn. We've seen that on so many things. What do I have in here that, yeah, check it out. Look at this, same kind of feature. If you guys haven't seen my wall of RC before because you've never seen my uh, channel, this is only the beginning. <laughs> I have had many collection videos, uh, but RC, RC everywhere. But regardless, let me go back to here. This is pretty heavy because I got the batteries in it. This is the Spiker Cat, okay? Ryan Spiker 3D printed this entire machine. Of course, other than the uh, hardware on it, everything has been printed, right? I've got lots of videos of this as well, but this is also running on a single motor uh, or like a motor and sprocket system. Let me see here on the inside so you guys can see even better. 
where the motors are that are driving it. Carefully check it out. So there's the motors. One motor here, one motor there, working basically on the same type of system that would work it over there. Guys, if you want more information about the Spiker Cat, right, I've got videos on this too. I've got videos on all of these RCs. No, this is not an RC, but yes, Torque Robotics does do an RC package for these types of machines. It's just, it's a very complicated setup. Now, I know I should be in here cleaning this out right now, but really what I want to do is get that brain swapped out, see if I can actually get this system to communicate again. Okay, now these bits, they're gonna be large, but I may have some because of fifth scale world, right? All my uh, fifth scale RCs, the giant trucks. A lot of people have been asking me why the heck I haven't been working on my fifth scales. Look at that, I had, do have more. There's my DBXL, my electric, my uh, stock 5T, Project Large 2.0, and of course, dun, 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 the Vecta 5 over here as well. Just got one of the tires taken off of it. But uh, because of my back issues, I've been having a hard time, you know, throwing around these big heavy machines. But obviously I can lift up a uh, cab, but it is hydraulic assist. Assisted. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and pick out what I need. Ball end. Here I go. That would be good. No problem, no problem. Here we go, last one. Okay, being very careful with the antenna. I see that I have room to move this. Just basically dropping it down, making sure it's paired up the right way. Let's get the camera in closer here. Just going to carefully wiggle and remove, making sure that everything is clean and free of any kind of dirt. Even though that's impossible with a skid steer. That's <laughs> a used one. <laughs> here we go, out comes the old module. Antenna goes back into place, and then one, two, three, four. All done. I love the hydraulic assistance. Very nice. why I'm not using a socket set? That's a good question. <laughs> Piece of cake. Now, let's try to rebind uh, the brain to the radio and see if it works. Cross your fingers for me. Okay, so the pairing sequence basically goes like this. You've got your ignition key on this side here. Yes, it actually has an ignition key. <laughs> it's very cool that way. Uh, I don't want to uh, have it on a tilt, unfortunately, because it does have a tilt sensor in there as a medical feature, so I don't want to be messing around with it when it's actually trying to be on a flat surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hold in my aux 7 button as well as my auto leveling button, and I'm going to turn it to the first key switch here. What's going to happen is all the lights are going to come on and then these are going to start flashing right here indicating that it is ready to pick up a signal from the skid steer. This is the uh, box on the back that really is the interface and emergency stop button on the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead put the key in here for the remote box and I'm going to go ahead and switch it. There are three positions here so I'm going to switch it all the way to the uh, pairing mode and it should start flashing rapidly. Now this should be sending a signal back to the remote right now that should have picked up on those flashing buttons 
and it's going to show us that it's in channel 2. Now for me to be happy I can either switch my channels like if we had multiple machines or whatever and actually go through a lot of channels here. But what we should be able to do once it's on 2 is push 8 and done. All right. Look at this. <laughs> this is awesome guys. Okay, okay. So Really what I want to do now is because again, I don't want to have a tilt feature activated. I can go ahead and start the ignition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there you go, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know it's totally a different style of radio control video uh, than what I normally do, uh, but I want to send a shout out to all of our viewers that are still with us, especially while I'm working on something as large as this RC skid steer. RC, whether it's big or small, I love them all. I gotta say a shout out to Torque Robotics for their awesome service in sending me out a new radio and a new brain to swap out. You can see it was a simple job to try to get everything up and on the go. And uh, guys, like I always say, get outside, go enjoy the hobby of RC. Find one you love and you'll have a hobby for a lifetime. See you in the next episode, guys. Bye for now.